Welcome to educator.com. This lesson is concerned with aspects of MATLAB that enables you to get a grip on this powerful tool essentials. Objective is to get to know some simple MATLAB commands and get familiar with MATLAB desktop and editing features. The name MATLAB stands for Matrix Laboratory. The reason for this name is the idea behind development of MATLAB to make matrix computations particularly easy. If you don't know matrices, no need to worry, we examine them in details later. One of the likable features of MATLAB is the interactive views. And it makes MATLAB different from other programming languages. By interactive views, I mean you can type some commands on the command line and get the answers immediately. This interactive views can range from simple commands like sum of two values to more complicated actions like solving a set of linear equations. As problems get more complicated, the need for a more sophisticated programming approach will be felt. This course is more about MATLAB and its features rather than programming essentials. But we are going to deal with programming issues and nuances as we go further. There are two essentials requirements for successful MATLAB programming. First is you need to learn the exact uh, rules for writing MATLAB statements or the correct syntax. So you know how to write a program like a loop or lo some logical operators, but you need to know the syntax for those in MATLAB. The second important thing that you need to know when you want to write a program is the logical plan to attack the particular problem. So you need the correct approach. The best way to have a correct approach is to write down the algorithm that you want to use to attack the problem. We're going to talk about those later on. Now we get to the fun part, using MATLAB. After installing MATLAB, you can access it with either a uh, shortcut or through your program files. And let's see what you see when you open MATLAB. So this is a MATLAB environment that you can see. And this is called MATLAB command line that you can type different commands on the prompt and execute them by pushing enter. You can also exit MATLAB either by pushing the red cross or uh, typing quit or exit. Let's get to know MATLAB better by practicing some simple exercises. Try to write 2 plus 5, as you see, 2 minus 5, 3 times 5, 3 divided by 5, and 3 backslash 5, which divides 5 over 3, and 3 cadet 4, which will resolve 3 to the power of 4. Let's examine this comment with this minor change. For example, 2 dot plus 3, 3 dot asterisk 4, and 4 dot cadet 5. As you see, results are the same, but this dot will help a lot when we start operating on matrices. So remember, when you're operating on single values, dot, having it or not, doesn't matter that much. But when you work on matrices, having the dot may, will make a difference. Another feature of MATLAB is a smart recall. So by using up arrow key, you can navigate through the commands that you typed in MATLAB command line. And you can now edit them as you like and use them again. So we did some simple exercises and we talked about a smart recall. Let's now talk about the limits that you might need in mathematics. As you know, there are values in mathematics that are not well defined. Like what is the smallest value larger than zero or what is infinity or what is the division of zero by zero. So as you know, these are, these are not well defined values, but you might need them, especially when you do some mathematical operation, like taking the limits, integration and other, other mathematical operations. In MATLAB, some of them are defined. For example, if you define INF, this is infinity and it's a predefined value in MATLAB. Or EPS will give you the smallest value larger than zero that MATLAB can handle based on the ability of the computer that you are using. So this value might change if you are using a different computer and it all depends on the computation ability of the computer that you are using. Also division of zero by zero is defined as NAN, which stands for not a number. Next, we're going to talk about variables and how we can assign a value to a variable. Go to MATLAB and type A is equal to 2. 
As you see, the value 2 is assigned to the variable A. You can see that in your workspace. You can change this variable. For example, A is equal to A plus 2. So you have a new value assigned to your variable. And you can see it here as well. Or you can just define a new value for your variables. You can also use the variable that you already defined to define a new variables, for example, okay. As you notice, every time we execute the command, value displayed immediately. We can prevent that from happening and keep your desktop clean by simply putting a semicolon at the end of each statement. For example, we can define B3, the semicolon, and you don't see it displayed afterwards. But the value is already saved and you can check it in your workspace. MATLAB has all the usual mathematical functions that can be found on a scientific calculator. Let's check some of the work that you might need to do. For example, SQRT stands for square root. You can do it for example, square root of 2. Or you can use it to calculate the square root of pi, which is 3.14. And as you see, and like epsilon, and INF is a predefined value in MATLAB. You can use sign, for example, sign 90. And as you might expect, the signed value for 90 degree should be one. But MATLAB by default uses radians as its input argument units. You can easily have the argument in degrees by multiplying the value that you have by pi over 180. So sine 90 times pi over 180 will give you the value of one. Another function that you might find interesting is exponential and is e or neper value to the power of whatever you want to have. Some exponential of one give you the neper value. As you notice, we used pi and it was a predefined value in MATLAB. We can define new values for those predefined values as well. For example, if you type pi equals to four, and if you notice, we don't see it here now. The value pi equals to four is displayed. And also you can see it in workspace since it's a value that you define and it's not a predefined value of MATLAB. You can check all the variables or values that you have in MATLAB by using whose function. So, so far we used some values that have name and also we did some calculations since we didn't assign a variable name to them. They are saved as A and S and it will change every time you do a new calculation or mathematical operation without defining a variable. Also restore the value that you have, for example, for pi by clearing it. As you see, you don't see it anymore in your workspace. And if I type pi, I will see the value of 3.14 or the original value of pi that MATLAB is defined. You can also clear all the variables by clear all and all the variables in your workspace will be gone. Thanks for being with us for another session on MATLAB brought to you by educator.com.